It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. <laughs> hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to take a close look at the Mini's Forum UM590 series. It comes with the AMD Ryzen 5900HX. But yeah, the thing is, how is the quality with these Mini Forum Mini PCs? Also, it comes with a completely different price tag. They also call this the Venix series and I must say that you have all kinds of mini forum models. It's quite confusing to be honest. Let's do a quick unboxing. We do get like this very nice card saying, don't be naughty, don't remove the CPU cooler. Okay, completely understand why they added, but I'm still going to do a quick teardown. Then of course, the deluxe toilet paper manuals with not a lot of information, but again, let's remove it. Let's take a close look at the PC later on. Underneath, we're going to find ourselves the power supply and some necessary cabling. Ah, oh, there you send me the right cable. Alright, here I think it's a very short, like cheap HDMI. It also comes with a stand, so make it like a very cool way to basically display your machine. The power supply isn't a very, very big one, to be honest. The mini PC itself, it must say that it does come with a very nice weight to it, and the quality in general is better than I've seen with the really cheap, the cheap, cheap machines from AliExpress. But overall, it's like a plastic, fantastic case. It's not like some metal parts are on the outside. But also we're going to do a quick overview of the connector is. But first, let's talk about the specifications. Because when you're looking at specs, we do have different versions. So this is the AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX. Comes with AMD Radeon, a GPU inside, 512GB SSD, Wi-Fi support, Windows 11 Pro. But we also have the option for basically bottle share support and not to forget, 8GB of DDR4 dual channel memory. At the front, we're going to get an on-off switch, the audio jack out. Then we're having like two Type-C ports, and one of them can even be used for connecting a display. Okay, another thing is at the back, we do have like four USB ports, two fast ones, three little and two normal ones, two HDMI's, an RG45 Ethernet, and of course the input for the power supply. The case itself, Ray mentioned, is a little bit of plastic fantastic. I really love the design, it's very compact. The case design, I will give it like a 7 out of 10 when it comes to a score. Alright, so the first benchmark, well, let's take a close look at some Crest Bandicoot, the remastered edition. So we're going to use the full HD 920 by 1080 and we're just going to take a look at like, how far we can push it. We have like a mix of medium and low settings and we're going to shut down the bloom effect and the ambient conclusion effect. And we're just going to take a close look how this game will run with these like, settings. Oh, you're looking basically at the FPS at the right top corner. You can see like it runs around 40 FPS. So that's basically the best that we're going to get out of the system. So what we can do basically is tweak with the settings. So let's get to back to the menu. Let's see if we can go to the system settings, graphics. Let's see if we can get it to a little bit lower for fun, just to check out what we're actually going to get. Alright, so next up, let's take a close look at another game I really love to always to play. It's Dead Alive, a redemanding game. Uh, this is like everything goes, effects going to quality low, everything going to be setting to 1. And that's basically what we're going to do. And let's boot up a game just to see actually how it will run. Okay, so what you're basically going to get with Dead Alive is a very demanding game. Take consideration with this mini PC. We do get like an okay performance. It's 30 FPS. It's not enough basically. Personally, I don't really notice it at all when basically looking at the screen itself. Alright, so let's take a close look at some gameplay of Grip. And I must say like when you're playing and you're looking at the FPS counter, the game, <laughs> when it say it's actually playable with 27 up to 30 FPS, but take consideration, just wanted to see how far we can push it, like what happens if we're going to put this thing on full HD and we're going to get like maximum, let's say, like say specifications and is this game still playable. So you will need to do a little bit of tweaking, maybe some mix of medium high settings.
Next up, I just want to try a little bit of mini motor racing in a full HD, every setting set to high. This is a game that doesn't take up a lot of say, CPU, GPU power, but don't get me wrong, like it's still quite demanding. Another game I really love to try on these boxes are Street Fighter 4 of course. But what you need to take consideration is that this isn't a very old fighting game but it's quite still demanding. We're also going to try out Street Fighter 5 just to see what are the difference between them. But of course I think it's such a, just a fun thing just to check out a lot of let's say old school fighting games. I shall grind me my kill. All that exists. Are you ready to fight? Next up, of course, like I already said, I wanted to try some Street Fighter V. But how is it actually going to be running on this? Take consideration, we're still playing on full HD, but we did set it up to basically like that it is going to be having like medium settings. This is the path of my destiny. Bow down for my psycho power. Round one. Fight! Hadouken! Hadouken! That's what he said! Another game I wanted to try out is Soul Calibur. Let's see how it runs. Everything high and full HD. Yep. Blood, flesh, and souls are offered to the gods amidst deathly chance. Unknown energy signature detected. Then we terminate it. I'll silence your incessant mouth forever! Battle one. Fight! Death! See ya! All right, so next up, let's play some PlayStation Portable. Let's see how the emulation goes on here. So the next thing we're going to do is setting everything to the maximum rendering resolution 10 times. V-Sync, everything is on, high, high, high. No frame skipping whatsoever. So let's see what we can get out of this box with settings like these. God of War game in combination with 10 times resolution is this chip powerful enough but nope it isn't so we just need to set it back to eight times or maybe six times to have like a great performance but again it's going to be like the more like the more demanding games like God of War didn't run on 10 times resolution take that in consideration with other games will run on maybe 10 times or even eight times without any problem whatsoever okay so another system I wanted to try for emulation is PlayStation 2 just to see how it will run yeah PlayStation 2 is like not like very demanding when it comes to a system like this so we should like see no problem whatsoever when it comes to emulation but let's get into it Brother, you're welcome to Garibaldi. give me the frequent flyer miles Nothing. now you're playing with style all right so the next game i wanted to try out is dead alive 3 from the xbox classic I just wanted to check out how we can basically like squeeze as much as possible out of this, even with an internal TDB resolution. Let's take a close look at some Castlevania for the PlayStation 3. Can we emulate this game on a box like this? Die, devil! Ah. Move away! He's lying!
So that was a quick overview of all of the stuff that we can basically play on this mini box. Everything was based on Windows, take that in consideration. So let's do a quick teardown and let's take a little peek in the inside. So what I understand of is like there is no option for adding a 2.5 inch drive so far I know at the bottom part. The bottom plate can be removed by four screws and that's the only thing that holds basically the bottom plate in place. And of course some clicking mechanisms but not like very strong ones. When opening it up here you can swap out the memory if you want to like the M2 or just simply the two RAM modules if you want to upgrade it for bigger ones. So that can be done fairly easy. With only one screw you can lift out the M2 and VME and just basically like replace them. They also implemented an extra tiny piece of metal for giving it a little bit more cooling. And of course the dual channel memory can be upgraded. And underneath the storage what you're going to get is an M2 Wi-Fi dongle already installed. This is not the most expensive but not also the most powerful box out there. I think when you want to have like some casual like browsing, playing some basic games, it's fine. Or you can make it a retro emulation beast. But that's maybe something cool for another video. Consider subscribing, hitting the little bell and it will be great to see you in the next video.